In today's classes, I showed you how when I'm starting a new feature, I also start a new branch within Git. So we can see with an Eclipse here, I'm currently in a branch called Select Translator. And within this branch, I've committed a couple of changes that allow me to see some things like my working combo box and uh, input and output labels. So in order to incorporate these changes into master, I need to switch to the master branch and then merge from my feature branch. So let's see how that works. I'll go over here and choose team, switch to master. So now my working copy here is back to that stable master build, uh, master branch, excuse me. If I click here, you see this is the old version of the user interface. So now I need to merge from that other branch into master. And I can do that by right clicking here and choosing team and merge. From here, I see all my different options. I want to merge from that branch into master. These defaults are fine for us. And here's the result. Now I'm on the master branch and my master branch has the features from my feature branch. In fact, at this point, I don't need that other branch anymore. I'm going to try to keep things tidy. I'll just uh, get rid of it. I can do that under team, switch to other. This is a little awkward to get to. Under other, you can see what branches exist. I'll just delete that one. That's pretty common operation, really. You make a short-lived branch to explore a feature. Uh, if you like the results, you can merge those into master. And if not, you can just delete it and uh, it's gone for good. So the up arrow three here means that I have three commits locally to master that are not pushed to the shared repository. I'm going to go, I'm going to go ahead and push those to GitHub right now. So let's see, that's under team, push branch master. So since I've updated the master, uh, what happens to your view? Well, I have another workspace open, which has uh, the old uh, copy of the GitHub repository. So this one, um, oops, let's go ahead and run this, run as Java application. So this is just the old version of the code here. I haven't pulled the changes I just pushed, obviously. Um, let's say that uh, over here I was working in a branch, which of course we always want to do. So I'll say uh, switch to a new branch, we'll call this messing around. And over here let's make some real obvious change, like add a new class called this is an obvious change. So we can see that my messing around branch here has a new file in it. So what happens now if I pull, oh, you know, to be a uh, complete here, I better commit that change. So I'll say add a ridiculous file to this branch. And I should just say add a ridiculous file. The fact that it's to a branch doesn't really uh, need to be said. We'll commit that. Okay, so now the branch that I'm working in here, kind of an experimental branch, it's uh, it's stable. There's no changes here that have not been committed to that uh, branch. So, where was I? We're going to pull from GitHub. I don't know what that means. Oh, it's complaining about that branch being there. Sorry, let me switch back to master before I pull. Uh, switch to master. Here we go. And now we'll pull. And sure enough, it pulls in all those changes. So if I run this now, I see this working code that we had just pushed from the other workspace. But I can still do this. I can still say team switch to messing around. And there's my, this is an obvious change. So in this way, if I keep all my work in a separate branch, I can pull and update my master branch without losing this. There's a few more steps involved, and so we haven't been using this approach in class yet, uh, but now we'll be free to. So the work that I want to share with you, I can put into a master branch. Your own experiments you can put into a separate branch, and then you can pull in my changes without losing your old changes the way we did before by using hard resets and clean.